New products. New, new, new. New product time. All right, here we go. First up, copper tape. Okay. Um, so yeah, we've got copper tape. My popular demand people were asking us. We, we yeah. have copper tape in the Draudio kit and also um, I think in the Makey Makey, but people wanted to get their own. And so this is a lot of, of copper tape and we have two. We have thin, which is um, six millimeter and thicker, which is 25 millimeters. The same exact manufacturer. Um, both of them are 15 meters worth of yeah. copper tape. And um, this is pure copper tape. So we splurged, we got the, the real pure copper tape. So it's a little more flexible, softer, yeah. so that's good. Um, and uh, it's also um, got conductive adhesive on the back. And oh. so that's important too, because a lot of cheaper con uh, copper tape that you'll get, um, especially if you're like, oh, I'm just gonna go on eBay and get copper tape for cheap. Often it will not have um, conductive adhesive or they'll say it is conductive and it's not. Um, so we definitely got conductive adhesive on this, which is good. So you don't have to solder to it if you're placing it on top of a pad or something. And these are really good for stuff like uh, Draudio hacking, makey makeys, um, yeah. Uh, you want to do a capacitive touch pad. Um, they're really handy. I use copper tape all the time for all sorts of things. You can also, I mean, they can carry current. Yeah. They're, they're not super thick, but it, it will carry current. You can do the calculations for Stained glass. <laughs> you can also use it for stained glass. Although yeah. this is, this is a little bit too thin and this is a little bit too thick, I think. But yeah, yeah you can, uh, you can little definitely tiny work with this glass. stuff. <laughs> so you can definitely work with this stuff. So now we have, um, I think this is, a, it's a lot. You get a lot for your purchase. This is a lot of tape. Yeah. This is good stuff. Okay. Uh, next up. These are handy. This is super handy. Hold on, let me see where it is. These are little switches. It's an inline switch. Inline switch for inline all switch. of your electronics. Yeah, it's it's kind of, I was actually looking for something different and I and I uh, found this by accident and I was like, this is so handy, I have to have this in the store. And I got, I got a bunch and then we immediately used them in production. And mm -hmm. everyone's like, I don't know how we lived without it because they use it to reset the testers and like to turn on and off stuff without having to reach behind, like things that don't have switches. So this is, yeah. Basically, you know, it's a standard uh, 2.1 millimeter DC jack. So like 99% of your power adapters and battery holders will have this on, on there. And in line is a, um, a multi-amp switch that just basically turns on and off. It's a really nice clicky switch. It's really solid. Yeah. Um, it's actually meant for a lamp. So it can handle up to like 200 volts or AC or 120 volts AC. But uh, we're using it for DC. And uh, we find it's good for that. It'll probably switch like five amps pretty easily. Yeah. Um, you can use up to 25 volts DC, no problem. Yeah. And uh, it's just really handy because you know, for like a couple of dollars, you put it between your Arduino and your power supply, and then it has an on-off switch. Yeah. Or between like you know whatever you've made. And it comes in Adafruit Black. Got um, uh, someone Very handy. Yeah. Someone asked, is there ones that have an LED indicator? You know, I really wish it did, but the problem is it doesn't know what the voltage is going to be, and so that's yeah. why. Like, often, if you yeah. find one with an indicator, it's for, it's got a neon bulb, you, it's for 120 volts. You would need to know the voltage would, at the time. The thing is, is that this was meant for a lamp, so if it had an indicator, the lamp would expect 120 volts, so then when you drove yeah. it with a 5-volt adapter, it wouldn't work. So that's why it doesn't have an LED in it. Hopefully, your project has some sort of LED indicator instead. So yeah. this is, but still, these are really handy. I, yeah. I, I stashed, like, 10 of these. Lady Ada approved. Okay. Yeah. Next up. Uh, it's here. We've had these for a bit, but we were waiting um, to make sure that we had a couple other things. Uh, these are the electric imps. Imp, imp. And uh, Lady Ada, what the heck is an electric imp? <laughs> um, it's a little imp inside your SD cards. Um, yeah. So this is a, a little SD card. When I saw this, actually, I saw this at Maker Fair, and I was like, this is pretty cool. And so we're, we're getting some of these developer editions, and this is an interesting device. Um, it's a little, it's a little weird because the thing is, is, it looks a lot like an SD card that you'd put in your camera, yeah. and it's shaped like an SD card on purpose. They did this because they wanted it so you could get connectors really cheap because that's a common problem when you're designing yeah. something. You want something where the connector, you can, you don't have to make a custom connector. And yeah, like source. XB needs an XB shield. Yeah, it's a little yes, annoying. but this just you use an SD card holder yeah. to interface with. Which it. I think is is actually quite smart. And the SD card uh, pinout. Um, uses, there's two ground pins, and so this actually only uses one of those ground pins and it detects um, whether that other pin is also grounded. And uh, if it isn't, yeah. it turns itself on. So it, it, even though it's SD card shaped, it will not work in anything that uses an SD card. You put card. it in, it just doesn't work because it's looking for like, oh, hey, it I don't got anything be, there. It yeah. needs to be a special socket. It needs not a special socket, but it needs a special connection. It's like pin eight or something it has to be connected yeah. higher through a 10K resistor or something. Anyways, yeah. so, so you know, just SD card shaped, but you can't, it's not gonna, like, you can't put this in your camera and you can't put this in your MP3 player, it'll magically work. However, we do have a, a handy little breakout board for it. And so yeah. what happens is that Called this- April. 
This board, if you've ever used an iFi card, it's, it's kind of similar. Inside is actually a Wi-Fi chip. And if we took apart one of these, Kevin came over, K-Town was in town, and we took one of these apart. And um, we'll, t we'll put photos up of, of the inside, which is really interesting. So even it's an SD card, and inside is a Wi-Fi adapter and a little microcontroller. It's like a, a arm. It's a Broadcom chip and then an ARM core. And what it does is when, when you power it, it um, you can program it to, to look for Wi-Fi, and it'll go to the Electric Imp website, and you can register a firmware that it will download and run on it. So it's basically like a little Wi-Fi-enabled microcontroller that you program it through a web interface. So this is kind of cool because what you can do is you can have your project, like it's also like super low power, and it's designed to like be embedded in something. So what you can do is you can have your little Electric Imp Projects. Let's say you had a, um, a solar power temperature sensor or something, and it's on your roof, right? It's like it's a barometric pressure sensor or temperature sensor. So instead of having, if you want to reprogram it, instead of going upstairs, grabbing the box, bring it downstairs, plugging in your JTAG, writing your code, and, and, and reprogramming it, instead what you do is you go to the, the Electric Imp website, and the, you use their um, web software, and you say, "Hey, this you know this card ID number XXX is mine." And on the back, it has like the you know unique MAC address, and that you that is unique to every card. And then you say, "Hey, for that card, um, upload our, my new code," and the Electric will automatically um, know to go to the website, get the latest code, update itself with this Wi-Fi bootloader, and they'll run it. So it's a little processor with Wi-Fi built in that you upload wirelessly so it's it's very powerful and i think it's very interesting yeah and i think for a lot of projects um i mean the the really killer thing is is that it's really cheap it's 30 dollars. so like that's the same price as like a wi-fi adapter yeah and it, it has the processor built in and it's a fairly good processor it has all your your things that you like like spi i squared c yeah. analog digital converter what do you code in for this um, they say it's like squirrel. It's like a, it's a C-like yeah. language. It's just, it's something like C. Um, it's not it's not too weird. It's just, it's scripting esque, but it's yeah. it's it's probably. You can check out the squirrel. Do. There's a squirrel resource wiki yeah, thing. Yeah, you check out check out their website. I think um, for what what it's really meant for is so like because it's it's you know you're you're buying one for thirty dollars and the idea is that like let's say you want to make. Um, like a, a Wi-Fi light bulb or something, yeah. or um, like a Wi-Fi um, Christmas tree light setup. Um, you could have, you know, you could manufacture it, and every one of these would have a card in it, and it, the the price wouldn't be prohibitive. And then instead of having like Bluetooth and you have an app and it's weird, it would all run on Wi-Fi, and it's very it's yeah. very easy. I think they can just pop it in and like the code goes down. It's cool. It's basically yeah. very. I like it because it's very fast and easy. Like it's not, you know, it isn't a fully open source system. Yeah. It's, um, you do have to use their website. Yeah, it's like iFi. It's like, it's you not an open source server that goes yeah. with it, but the value of it, if you're interested in it, that's where for, it comes from. I think from. for people who are doing one-offs especially, like if they just want it to work and run, I think that there is there is a lot of value to that. So I thought it was an interesting um, development board um, for, you know, the, to, to carry. And so we also carry the April, which is, um, you know, the dev board that they've designed for it, and it's really well designed. And I was like, well, I can't really do a better job than this. So I just asked them, hey, can we pick up these dev boards from you? And um, so we carry them and uh, they break out all the pins and then you yeah. can power it from battery. And it has a really nice um, high efficiency buck converter, which is yeah. uh, really cool. Okay. All right, we got some It's as detailed. And, and for more info, check it out the electric imp. Uh, dot com website, but that is a that's a lightweight. Yeah. We'll do some cool projects with this as well. Okay, course. next up, we're going to be a couple of minutes late on the show this week, so well, we're just we're going to yeah no, this is good. We have a lot of stuff. The imp was so the we've got uh, HDMI monitors for things like the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, we actually sold out, but I'll, I'll yeah, show we this. sold these really fast. But um, oops, let's go to uh, the overhead. So I here it is, an HDMI. It's, it's super high res. Well, yeah, you can see. Yeah. It. So you can actually read this text. It's very readable. Yeah. And it's um, it's only seven inches, but it's very readable. And we've got uh, VGA, DVI, and uh, HDMI, and then it runs off of like a you know nine volt adapter. And then um, if you hold on one second, I can uh, I can log in. And um, I just like this because it's a much higher resolution um, than our um, we have a, an NTSC. Uh, seven inch, but this is much clearer. So let me start up X. So you can see it's pretty high res. I think it's like ten. It's like ten by seven. It's like one thousand by seven hundred pixels. Um, it's uh, it's definitely like 
high res. Like actually, when we were like installing a computer, I used this as a monitor. Yeah. And um, it's hard to tell, of course, through a, a screen, uh, the video cam, but it's it's super crisp screen. It's actually, I, I tried out like four or five different HDMI yeah. monitors. And this one was um, the clearest by far. Very crisp, looks good. I tried it with VGA as well, it looks really good. Yeah. So uh, we'll be getting more of these. Uh, it's a really fantastic little addition. And then there's some mounting holes on the back if you want okay. to uh, attach it. Next up. This is like one of my favorite new products we have. Black. This took me many months to get. <laughs> black GPIO cables. I had to order a lot. <laughs> yeah, this really is an Adafruit black. I wasn't kidding earlier. No, we custom ordered yeah. this um, with black with a white stripe. We wanted to have really high quality GPIO cables for Raspberry Pi stuff. And uh, because we're, uh, we ordered so many of them, we said, let's get them in our black. color, black. And so uh, we have them now. Painted black. Okay. Uh, I'm anything. just going to keep them yeah, 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 on. Now we have these little remotes, and then we're going to show a quick video. Then we're going okay, to try to show a project. I just want to show the remotes yeah. on, on here. And uh, the video is actually Yeah, really I have a video. Uh, Becky made a fantastic video. So, so we I just want to show little, how big it is. Yeah, this is a remote. This is a receiver, and it controls stuff. Yeah, so let me just show this receiver on the overhead really fast. Can you go to the overhead? Yeah. Okay. Go on there. Let's get there. So these are little receivers, and I, this is kind of interesting because we have, like, XBs, and XBs are, like, bidirectional, like, 2.4 gigahertz lengths. So the thing about this receiver is it's very it's very dumb. It's actually just a coding, it's a fixed code receiver. So this little chip has an antenna and then some parts and then there's these pinouts and you give it power and ground and the power is like five volts. And then there's four pins and they're all outputs. And basically you can either drive the outputs high or low and that's all it does. There's no like baud rates, there's no setting like transmission speed, there's no nothing, there's no addressing, you know, it's very, very simple. Um, but that makes it really powerful because you don't need a microcontroller. So for example, for the demo, and this is the same setup we have for the video, um, there's no boot, booting, there's no code upload, whatever. I just power it from five volts, and then um, the remote control just works. So if you just have like a project where you're like, well, I just want to turn something on or off, or you want to signal to your Arduino, or you want to signal to your Raspberry Pi, or whatever, using an RF remote. So this is a... Th a th 315 megahertz remote, I think, or something, or I don't remember the exact frequency. Um, and there's three different types, and we'll show the little video, but I just wanna show that there's no microcontroller required, and it's, you don't have to use one. These are actually used for like garage door openers and stuff like that, or like AV systems. You can use it with a microcontroller, because it's, it's this five volt output, and you can use the resistors to divide it down for a three volt micro, but it's not, it's not bi-directional, it's only from the remote to the receiver. This guy does not transmit at all. Okay. Only this transmits. All right, so let's just see the video if you can see the difference between the three Would types. this work with the power switch tail? This will work great with the power switch tail. That's an excellent project. That's right. George Graves mentioned that. All right, let's watch the video. Okay. And that is new products for the week.